We're talking about how to make cable today. Hi everyone, Scott Daly here from Carl Stahl, Sava Industries, and today we're talking about how to make cable and who better to have that conversation with than Tom Duffy, the gentleman who actually makes Sava's cable. Welcome, Tom. Good to be here, Scott. Yeah, you bet. So Tom is uniquely qualified to have this conversation because not only does he make our cable, Sava's cable products, but Tom is also our longest active employee. How long have you been working with Sava, Tom? I'm with him 43 years now. And that would make you how old when you came here? 17. And, and how did you, you, you mentioned before we actually started shooting how it came to be. Tell us a little bit about how it came to be that you started working here at 17. I was actually on the, uh, the uh, work program in, in high school. Mm -hmm. And I actually went to school for half a day and then they turned us loose to, to work for the rest of the day. And, and have you made cable? the entire time since the day you started that work program or was there some period where you were you know just following a, a school curriculum and then ultimately became an employee what was the you know the, the sort of the maturation there i actually started with the company um as like a, a little bit of do do everything type mm -hmm. of guy you know it was mm -hmm. i did cleaning up some organizing stuff um they started uh, showing me different things in different departments. Um, and how long after you were doing that did you actually become someone who's making our mechanical cable? I'm going to say probably uh, about two or three years later. So I've actually been making cable with the company for about 40 years now. 40 years. Yeah. So that does qualify you <laughs> to make cable. And I mean, pardon me to talk about making cable, excuse me, but does it, do you, um, do you love the work? Here you are 40 years later. Do you, do you enjoy the work? What is it, if you do love the work, what is it about the work that you find so satisfying? Yeah, it, it's, you know, there's a little bit of uh, everything happens. You know, I've, I've been a mechanical type of person mm -hmm. all my life. And there's a, a like certain a curious person. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't only look at something you know you could tell me all day long what it's all about but mm -hmm. i like to find out myself mm -hmm. you know what makes it tick and you know the the uh the different uh variety of what we do here it seems like there's there's always something different going on it's not ever the same old thing and for 40 years that's been true so the challenges you face making our customers cable um it's always sort of fraught with challenges it's sort of just always like, you know, uh, just peppered with things that need to be solved. Yeah, uh, I've, I've been really, really fortunate to, to work with a, a group of guys that, um, you know, they, they take on any challenge. Like it's, uh, they're on their own personal agenda to make, uh, to, to come out of it and make an excellent product. So even though Sava has its quality standards and naturally they're met, you're saying your team of people sort of take it as a personal obligation, a personal duty. Yeah, they 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 definitely, you know, they carry the job with them. Um, it's it's like a, it's not just a, an eight hour thing um, daily. It's like you know they you don't even know how many times we've uh, we've discussed things that we left off on the day before, mm -hmm. the following day, and they're still as concerned as they were when we started. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty nice distinction to have a team that, as you put it, is sort of carrying yesterday's passions into tomorrow's work. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So clearly you're qualified to talk about cable. And this, for our viewers, this is a conversation that's strictly about how cable is made and how you, you know, how different materials might behave in machines and in your hands while you're in the throes of producing, manufacturing cable. So let's just dive right in to the cable making process. Um, what, first of all, why don't we just start basic? Tell me how cable is made, just fundamentally what cable is comprised of. We actually take uh, individual wire, single wire, and we build it into certain constructions. Um, it gets wrapped a certain way. Uh, a, basic, a basic construction would be like a, a simple one by seven strand. Okay. Uh, what a one by seven is, is it's a core wire a single core wire right. wrapped with six outer wires. So when you're saying the word construction, again, for our viewers' benefit, when you're saying the word construction, you're saying the, the way with which those wires come in contact with each other. 
Right, correct. And how they're 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 round wrapped around one another. Right. And one by seven is a center core wire with six wires coming around it. Correct. So how okay? So is that the simplest wire Sava makes? We a, we actually make uh, cable from a two wire construction. Okay. Where your wires are basically a hundred and eighty degrees apart. Okay. And they're actually just wrapped together. There is no core. Right. Well, uh, two wires. How could there be? It's yeah. two wires total, uh, up to uh, nineteen by thirty-seven wire construction. Right. Which which is a combination of nineteen strands. Each strand has thirty-seven wires in it, and it gives you a total of seven hundred and three wires in that particular cable. So in these larger, that's that's a lot. Seven hundred and three wires. It's an okay. So. When you're dealing with wire, pardon me, cable that ha that involves that many individual st wire strands or wires, pardon me, um, you're saying that you're taking cable you've made here and you're putting it into cable. So there's cable. You're sort of adding more and more cable strands. So there already is stranded cables inside this large 703 wire construction, right? Yeah, they're they're you know it's a combination of you would take uh, you would make a basic one by seven and then you would take that one by seven right. and cover it up with 12 additional wires. And then you would take that, uh, that particular construction would be a 19 wire construction. Right. And then you would take that a step further and cover that up with 18 additional wires to make that particular strand 37 wires total. So um, what, what, what is the typical diameter? I mean, you know, we talked about um, that we make cable that's seven wires, two wires actually, uh, all up to seven hundred and three wires. What are the typical sizes of our cable? And and if you can, for those of us that are not mathematicians, you know, share with us you know how small it gets by comparing it to something that like we would all understand. Yeah, you um our our basic cable line um, starts out with wire as small as double O one two, so that that dimension would be. Say if you took, if you took uh, one inch, and you broke that down into a thousand separate units, mm -hmm. that would actually be just a little larger than one of those units. That particular wire, that's our so it's basic. It's almost impossible to see. Well, you, you're talking a uh, human hair. A uh, human hair is probably two or three thousandths diameter. Right. So you're you're talking about wire that's half the diameter of a human hair. <laughs> right, right. So it gets pretty crazy. Right. And and can we do we have the capacity to go smaller or is that essentially what we've seen so far? No, we're 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 getting we're getting involved now with uh much smaller materials. Uh take take uh like some of the tungsten work that we do. Right. Uh, we're seeing wire sizes that are a half a thousandth diameter a little larger than a half a thousandth in, in mm -hmm. diameter. Uh, we just we just actually ran a job this week, as a matter of fact, that that was a, uh, a use the wire point triple zero seven two diameter. So it's seven tenths of a thousand. So even smaller than the zero 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 one, one two right, right. that you began this part of our conversation talking about. Right. And, and you know the the material itself, if if you lay it out on a on a dark a tungsten, the tungsten that we use is a black tungsten. Sure. So it, so it's. I mean, I know we produce it that's shiny, but but uh, yeah, right. Most typically, I'm seeing more and more of the dark stuff here. Yeah, if if you put it if you put it up against a, a dark background, mm -hmm. you can't even see it. It's it's that small. So you're taking this impossible to see strand and feeding it into these giant machines it's funny though because the the tungsten material it handles totally different it it uh you're, you're actually you're taking me to my next point which was tell me about its behavior when you're actually producing cable from it and compare steel to tungsten so i can get a sense or our viewers can get a sense of the differences characteristically in handling it and how it feels in your hands once it's actually become cable um i can give you an example it's like if if you're working with stainless wire, mm -hmm. it's all about the tensile of the wire. Which means what? It's uh, what it what it takes to to let the material reach its breaking point. Okay. Um, and as an example, the stainless stainless steel wire 
It's like if you took two rubber bands and you stretched them alongside of one another sure. and, and, and twisted them very tight. Like, remember the old balsa wood airplanes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And sure. then you let the propeller go, and it wants to unwind. It wants to spin like yeah, crazy, right? right? Yeah. That's the same type of torque values that uh, you're left with in stranding stainless wire. It wants to. It wants to go back. There's to a lot of form. back torque. Yeah. Okay. Um, with the tungsten, it's kind of like instead of using uh, the rubber bands, mm -hmm. take two shoelaces and pull them alongside of one another, oh, and, and wind them, wind them tight, they and wouldn't then let them back go. At you at all? Though. No. No. So it, tungsten is almost dead in my hand. Yeah, in the constructions that we build. Right. Um. And and when you when you lay it out. On a on a flat surface, right. uh, sometimes you'll take the stainless material, mm -hmm. and it'll be very lively. It'll be very lively. It'll be very wavy. Um, there are other things that we do to compensate for uh, the waviness. You mm -hmm. know, to make it straighter. Mm -hmm. The tungsten doesn't have those properties. The tungsten is normally very very limp. Very, it's like a mellow type of wire once it's all stranded. And so when I'm holding. I, I get it now. So there's almost like uh, an elasticity to the stainless, where if I were to hold it vertically in my hand and pull back, it would maybe spring back. Whereas tungsten, if I did that, it would just fall towards me. Yeah, it's it's kind of the tungsten is very limp and um, very heavy, as compared to the to the stainless. And do we make stainless steel wire in those small diameters? The ones you described, we're making tungsten cable in. I mean, pardon me, I said wire a second ago, but do we make, do this, does the stainless steel cable we make, are we making it in the same diameters as we do our tungsten cable products? Actually, the tungsten material, we're seeing smaller diameters. So, you know, this, the steel, not that we couldn't. Right. Um, I think that the tungsten is more forgiving when you're stranding it. The tungsten, the tungsten wire acts like wire that, that is, uh, maybe two or three times the diameter of stainless. It just, it doesn't have, it's not as brittle. Uh, it doesn't have a tendency to want to give you complications as you're pulling it through the machine mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and winding it together. We're seeing, we're seeing uh, lay lengths with the... Can you define lay lengths for our viewers though, please? Lay length would be um, the distance that it takes for one outer strand to mm -hmm. make a complete revolution okay. around the center. Um, so, you know, you build your cables based on lay lengths that um, are made up of like a combination of your diameters. You have mm -hmm. to have you have to have a certain lay length in order to fit all the wires uh, nicely alongside of one another. Sure. Okay. Uh, in the wrap. Right. And um, we're seeing lay lengths in the tungsten material that we're making now, because the wire is smaller, uh, much tighter, much much closer than uh, what we've ever seen before. And because tungsten, and, and thank you, this has been a great conversation, we're just about finished, uh, because tungsten is so much more, so much less lively to use your word than stainless, I would imagine that you need it to really stay together because it has this tendency to just kind of relax. Yeah, that's correct. And whereas stainless wants to spring back and jump away, Tungsten just kind of is very calm in your hand. It kind of just falls. Right. Like a shoelace. Right. I think of a shoelace as something that would just kind of fall if I was holding it in my yeah, hand. Yeah, that's why I use that as an example. No, it's that's, very, exactly, that's exactly, you know, for lack of better terms, yeah. that's exactly how it reacts. That's a very good, that's a very good likening. Thank you. Um, Tom, I want to thank you for this conversation. Uh, I think folks watching this video are going to walk away with a a very clear understanding of how cable is made and what Sava can do to produce that cable. So I want to thank you so much for your time. Uh, and I can't wait to do more of this with you. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, you bet, Tom. It's been a pleasure. If you enjoyed this content, please say, say so in the comments. And if you have an idea on content that you'd like us to discuss, Tom or anyone else here at Sava, please mention that in the, the comments as well. You can find us all over social media. And thanks so much for uh, tuning in. Take care.